Hi there, my name is Nils with Learn to DIY. Now every once in a while you come across a tool that's just too cool not to share with others and that's the case today. Today I'm going to be showing you this very cool machine called the Snapmaker. Snapmaker actually is a combination CNC machine, laser engraver, and 3D printer all together in one thing. You can swap these modules out and do any of these three functions. Very cool stuff. I wanted to share with you some of the pros and cons that I've discovered as I've been working with this little product. This is not a sponsored video, but hopefully something that you'll be able to take a look at and see if this is a good fit for you. Now normally on this channel, Learn to DIY, I do projects, home improvements, fixes, uh, different things like that. And I have a second channel called The 3D Printing Zone. And on that channel, as you can imagine, I focus pretty much solely on 3D printing. When this product, when I discovered this, I was so excited by the fact that it can do CNC, laser engraving, and 3D printing that I thought this could be useful for a million different little projects. Imagine as a maker all the cool DIY things that you can create with having all three of these tools at your fingertips. So today we're gonna dive into this little thing and find out if this is a good fit for you. I'm gonna share, it's not perfect, there's some things that I didn't love about it, but most of the things about it were really cool. This is not a sponsored video, I just thought it was cool enough that I had to kinda of share this with the world. So, let's take a look. Now, right away, you're gonna notice that the Snapmaker is a pretty small little package. There's really not a lot to it. Um, this is it, this is the whole thing, and it's actually a little bit bigger than normal right now with the spool on it, but normally it's just this, you know, there's really not much to it. So this is very compact. Um, if you go on some of the forums for people who own the Snapmaker, you'll find that a lot of people are actually taking this around with them to shows or to venues where they can actually do laser engraving, um, CNC carving, things like that on the spot for customers. So pretty cool stuff. Now I gotta tell you, I have opened and assembled nine 3D printers at this point. I own nine of them, including this one. And of those nine, this was by far the most pleasant uh, unboxing experience that I've had. Take a look at how they package this thing, how well the presentation was made, how everything has its place, and it's all laid out so nicely. I was actually super impressed. I felt like this was opening some sort of an Apple product or something. It was that caliber of quality of packaging and of display and that box opening experience. I really don't care that much about uh, like box openings and that kind of stuff and unboxing. I will say, however, this was pretty fun seeing how great a job they did with that. Now, one of the first things I tried when I did get it assembled was 3D printing. So within probably an hour of having received the box and opening it and getting it assembled and everything like that, I was able to start 3D printing with it. I printed a little cube at first and then I went straight into this Colosseum and did the Roman Colosseum. We'll take a look at that in more detail in just a moment. But what I learned was that the printer comes with, well, the, the device, uh, not just a printer, comes with some software called SnapMaker.js. SnapMaker.js is some software that handles all three of its functionalities. So it can do all of the slicing for your 3D printing, it can do all of the um, sets, configuration and setup for laser engraving, including the power settings, the start point, everything like that, and then same kind of thing with the CNC. So I thought it was really cool that they had software that comes with it that's really just as essential as the hardware in making this a user-friendly experience. So someone with very little, to, or in my case, no experience with two of these functionalities was able to get in and get started and do some things really easily. So let's jump into the 3D printing aspect a little bit. How does this rate as a 3D printer? So first of all, this 3D printer has all of the things that you would expect a current and modern 3D printer to have. It does have a heated bed, um, it does have software to come with it, and it can handle just standard G-code files, which is really nice. There's nothing proprietary here. Um, it does have a little 0.4 millimeter hot end on it, and from what I can tell, it's a pretty standard hot end. I think I could swap that out with other hot ends, which is something I like to do. Um, it does have a fan for cooling as well, so that it does decent on bridging. In fact, it does quite well on bridging. Um, I, I was actually pretty impressed by that. And it moves at a pretty good pace as well. So the volume on this is pretty small. Uh, definitely not a large printer by any stretch. It'll do 125 millimeters by 125 by 125. So it's basically gonna do a cube about five inches. So not too bad. Um, it's definitely not as large as I would normally like, but that's one of the reasons they came out with the Snapmaker 2.0, which has three different sizes, including a much larger build volume size 
that can handle larger 3D prints as well as larger engravings and uh, laser etchings. So definitely a, a good option to take a look at, but even for the 1.0, pretty revolutionary to have all three things in one. Um, I did start with the 3D printer portion of things that, since that's what I'm most familiar with. And the first thing I wanted to try, I did a little cube and that came out just fine. So I moved on to um, this Roman Colosseum. Now, if you're looking at this, you can probably see the quality is okay. Um, I had some definite issues with it. Um, right in here, we had some of these little pillars that just didn't come out and it's not perfect. It did, it did a little bit of bridging, it came out okay. But as far as the general quality, especially at the 0.1 millimeter resolution that I printed it with, it's really smooth. This actually came out really good, I was impressed. So as far as accuracy and that kind of thing is concerned. Um, all of the little details in here, I thought this would be a good sample piece to try out. There's all these little, little details in here and you can really see how it did a really bang up job with those. I'm gonna keep printing with it and try it out. Um, I really feel like this is something that could print successfully and print well. I've seen a lot of good prints come off of it. I think I just need to keep playing with a little bit. Now to that end, uh, what I did is I went ahead with the calibration test for printers and it did pretty good. Um, this is the kind of a standard 3D printer test that I've run on many of these. It tests your overhang. So from the side here, you can see how much it's able to overhang. And it did obviously struggle here at uh, 80 degrees. Um, 80 is, is pretty severe. Like if you're getting up in the 50s and 60s, um, that's pretty good. If you're 70 and 80, even the top of the 80 looks great. It just had some extra filament. It was struggling with that underneath, but it did a pretty good job. Bridging, it did beautifully, um, which is especially impressive since there's not much of a fan going on here. It's just very subtle, very small, but it did a really good job with that. Details look really good. The text on this is tack sharp. It looks really nice. Um, we do have some little floaters on here and that has to do with the jerk and acceleration settings that I can mess with. Um, and then the, the little cylinders here came out great. All in all, this looks like a really pretty decent test. So I'm pretty impressed with how well it did with that. And again, that was printed at 0.1 millimeters. So after I tried out the 3D printing, I was ready to move to my second venture, which was CNC carving. Now, like I've mentioned, I have zero experience with CNC carving. I did some CAD in school and have done some 3D work and things like that, but have never tried CNC at all. So this was brand new to me. So all you have to do, this little module just comes right off. There are four screws. You take the little hex driver here and remove the, the M20 screws. Um, and put on the new module. So this is the CNC one here, and it's just got basically a standard uh, little ethernet clip in here for the wire that you plug that in, plug this, plug it into here instead. It recognizes what it is, and then you've got your screen here that you can work with and set it all up in SnapMaker.js, send it to here. And once again, you can do that via the USB cable, or you can work with a just USB jump drive, which is pretty nice to have both options. So swapping out is pretty easy. I've got a heated bed on here, and all I had to do was unplug this here, um, take out the screws, there's just thumb screws underneath here, and then put on this standard plate here. So I wanted to try something a little bit ambitious right off the bat, because why start simple, right? So I went ahead and did this. I took a photo and went ahead and put that in to the SnapMaker.js software. So I took this tiny little super sharp pointed bit, um, popped that into the end of the carver here, and then it's really just going row by row and carving at different depths every single bit. So this carving here actually took about 36 hours to do. So it took quite a long time because it wasn't removing much. It does come with a, another bit that's a lot larger. Um, this one here, you're not gonna get the same detail out of it, but you can move a lot faster if you just need to do something a little bit simpler. Um, I looked, you can buy other bits for it as well and try different things out. And the fact that it comes with a couple and give you some, some options is really nice. So had some good success with that. And as you can see, it came out perfect. Um, this is just a piece of pine. This is just a one by four that I took a slice of and wanted to try it out. It worked great. So very impressed with that. You do have different settings in SnapMaker.js to give it a try. Now the last thing I tried out was the laser engraver and I actually had a lot of fun with this. This thing was pretty cool. First thing I tried was just doing a logo. Um, so I did my learn to DIY logo here and it did a really good job. If you take a look really closely in at this, you can see there's almost a little bit of pixelation to it. And so you can adjust the settings to make it a little bit more high res or a little bit simpler and lower res. 
And again, this is just on a piece of pine, a one by four that I cut. It did a great job. It looks really good. Um, I handled it no problem. I think this print took something like 20, or engraving, took something like 23 minutes to do. So it moves pretty quickly. Uh, laser engraving is pretty fun, as you can see here. And then wood is fun. I wanted to try some other stuff. And I thought, let me experiment a little bit and see what I can get away with. So the next thing I tried was laser engraving the back of my phone case. So I, in Photoshop, mocked up a little picture of myself along with my name and did a little gradient on my name. Wanted to see how it could handle that. In Snapmaker JS, you've got multiple options for how it's going to render the actual laser engraving itself, the image of it. You can do it in dots, you can do it in lines, and there are other options as well. And then there's different, what I would call, rasterization settings for how it's going to handle those, that engraving or that image that you're trying to process. Then I thought, what else could I do? And I took off my belt, which is leather, and tried doing the same picture on my belt. I didn't change anything. The settings were the same, the size was the same. Literally all I did was um, line the belt up on the bed and let it go again. So that worked out really well too. So that's, that's actually still there today. So definitely lots of uh, options, lots of choices for how you do laser engravings and materials that you can work on, which is, which is really cool. Now to wrap up, just a few things about the Snapmaker itself. Um, some things that I like and some things I don't like. So I noticed uh, one of the things I like right away. First of all, again, the packaging, awesome. Really good experience. Kudos to whoever uh, engineered that experience for opening the box and how it was packaged. That's nice. Uh, I can take this screen, which is a touch screen, and I can just remove it right off the little holder. It's magnetic, and so it just snaps into place. Brilliantly done. Very, very nice. Uh, really love that. Um, the size of this thing is awesome. I think it would be really cool, and I could print one, I guess. To, it'd be really cool just to have a handle so you can carry this thing around from place to place as you're, if you're doing some traveling with this, or if you're just moving it around uh, the area that you're in. It, do, it does come with a spool holder, which I just leave on all the time. It's only for 3D printing, of course, but it's nice to have that on there. Um, so you've got some just nice little well thought out features here. One of the things that I wish it did better is with laser engraving in particular, and I think it's the same with CNC, I don't have the option, and I could be wrong, and if someone knows that I'm wrong on this, please leave it in the comments and I'll pin it. Um, I don't believe you have the option to change the power of the, engra of the laser engraver, of the laser, um, from the settings here. I think you have to do that on your computer, start a print here, and then, or start a job here, and then it will remember whatever that laser setting is. If I'm not mistaken, if I go to, for example, print a, um, something at 75% power, and then that's while the computer's connected, and then I take the USB stick and bring in another job that's supposed to be at 50% power, it's going to print it at 75 because it doesn't know to change that power setting. I could be wrong on that, but that's the experience that I've had so far. So being able to work a little bit more untethered would be ideal. Uh, the other thing is uh, kind of the same thing with the um, CNC is the starting point. I don't really have the option to say, remember this starting point um, from this device here, which would be super handy. I see, it seems like I had to do that with the computer connected as opposed to just through the interface here. So it'd be nice if the interface on the machine itself had a little bit more to it, but not a big deal. Um, just have a computer around, a laptop is handy, or if you have a computer in the room, you're doing this. Now on that note, um, this is noisy. So there is a, a fan back here that's pretty noisy. You've just got a little switch right here um, for the power. Okay. So it's starting up. We've got my screen going here. Um, it's pretty loud. It's got a, it's a fairly loud little thing. Not a big deal. This is a little, it's a tool, right? I mean, this is a little power tool, essentially. A very smart, very capable power tool. But that's something to keep in mind. You're not going to want to keep this in your bedroom, for example, and be sleeping while it's doing something. Pretty loud, and it feels like it's almost still ramping up a little bit as far as decibels. So something to keep in mind. It's a little bit noisy, and I'm okay with that. I think I have that expectation, so that's all right. So what about price? The Snapmaker 1.0 came out as a Kickstarter, and there were discount prices available for that campaign. But the current selling price for that from either Amazon or from Snapmaker directly is $799 for this machine. That's US dollars. And so not a bad price when you consider all that you're getting. You're really getting three separate machines all in one 
uh, easy with it. Literally within two minutes you could swap these out and have it go from a CNC to a laser engraver or 3D printer. So that's the price for the Snapmaker 1.0. The 2.0 model, the campaign has finished on, on Kickstarter as well and they have three models now available. So the smallest one is actually a little bit bigger than this one and also comes in at $7.99. So you get a little bit more volume, you've got some extra features and some updated software all for that same price. So hardware upgrade, software upgrade, and volume upgrade for $7.99. So definitely a great deal. Um, if you go to the, I think they call them the A150, 250, and 350, the A350, if I'm not mistaken, runs dimensionally 320 by 330 by 350. So you get two and a half times the size of this and a pretty decent volume. And that one is $1,199. So for $1,200 US, you're getting a pretty uh, good sized three-in-one machine. So that's the rates on the Snapmaker. I'm sure those will change over time. They always do. Things come down over time typically. But if you're interested in purchasing a Snapmaker, either the 1.0 or the 2.0, help me out by using the link in the description below. And that will give me a tiny bit of commission and it'll cost you exactly the same. So definitely check that out. I'll also put links in the description for the Snapmaker forum on Facebook. Something that I use to kind of find out how people are using things issues that they're running into and what the resolutions for those are and mostly just to see what cool things people are up to with the Snapmaker. Alright, so if you made it this far you are probably as intrigued by this cool little machine as I have been. Now on this channel, Learn to DIY, primarily we focus on builds and projects and home improvements for in the home and around the yard woodworking and things like that. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, feel free to check out some of the other videos on this channel. I have a second channel, the 3D Printing Zone, and if you're interested in 3D printing or are currently doing some 3D printing, I think you'll enjoy some of the content that you'll see over there, so be sure to check that out as well. We have a Facebook and Instagram feed for both of these channels, so if you wanna find out what's going on in between videos and kinda of behind the scenes on these projects and builds, I think you'll enjoy some of the content we post there as well. Again, my name is Nils. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today, and we'll see you on the next video.